Welcome to the Where's Shirley Show with your host, Shirley Mears. Hello and welcome. This is Shirley Mears here on 1640 AM. And we here at Champlin Broadcasting have an amazing relationship with OK Ethics. If you would like to know more about how Oklahomans have been known to resolve ethical issues, get to know Shannon Warren and the team at OK Ethics. It's so easy. Just go to okethics.org. If you'd like to know more about this program and ways to get involved, you can just send me an email, smears, and that's M-E-A-R-S, at champlinbroadcasting.com. Today we're visiting with Ray Sanders, and Ray Sanders is actually going to be our speaker at OK Ethics on Wednesday, May 21st, and it'll be at the Jim Thorpe Sports Museum. Is Mm -hmm. that right? That's right. That's where we'll be. Oh, we're very glad to have you today, Ray. Thank you. I'm glad you don't have to be an athlete to make it in over Jim Thorpe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you look like you could probably do okay over there. I was a B-teamer, trust Uh me. (laughs) (laughs) OK Ethics has usually has meetings at the Petroleum Club Mm -hmm. downtown, Chase Building downtown. You know, 34th floor, six elevators, about 400 people. Having the meeting over at the Jim Thorpe Mm -hmm. Museum over on Lincoln is another experience entirely. Oh, certainly. It's a beautiful facility. There's a lot to to see there. And it's a a great place to speak. I mean, the layout is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think people find it to be very comfortable. Mm-hmm. And we got a little sample of what you will be doing at our last meeting. Yeah. And so you, as our speaker, on the 21st, uh-huh. Wednesday the 21st here in the city, and Thursday the 22nd in Tulsa, That's you're right. going to be at our, our Tulsa chapter yeah, exactly. on Thursday. Yeah, it was fun uh, being back at the Petroleum Club. I've been able to do some roast there and do some other speeches. But uh, as I was coming in that day, as you may recall, I had a ladder that I carry with me. Uh, the speech is called the leader ladder. <clears throat> and the, the ladder that I was carrying in that particular day was a bamboo ladder. Because all around the world, one of the things that I've observed is ladders come in different shapes and sizes and forms. Some are made out of bamboo. Some are made out of wood. Some are made out of metal. They're even made out of chain and rope. And so this bamboo ladder uh, it kind of gets people's attention mm-hmm. as we begin to tease. And it was, what, a good seven oh, feet Oh, it, it, it was tall. about, yeah, seven feet tall. You, you got good perception. <laughs> And I came carrying it in that yeah. day, and everybody was like curious, what in the world is this guy doing with a bamboo ladder? It will here? set you apart in a, a crowd of 400. <laughs> <laughs> and so as I, as I was walking in, people were asking, what are you doing here? And I said, well, uh, like you, all of us are carrying around leader ladders. And that was the promotion we did that day as we talked about the fact that um, we all have different types of leader ladders. Some of us, you know, we may carry a lunchbox. Some of us may carry a briefcase. Some of us may carry a duffel bag. But even as children... We're learning to climb the leader ladder. You know, I have uh, six kids. I have three grandchildren. And it's been fun as a grandparent watching these young babies try to pick up and crawl and, you know, set up and do that whole thing. But from the very beginning, we're taught to climb to the top, right? Get to the top, wherever well, you and are. And it's almost instinctual because the little kids are saying, I can do it. Exactly. Let me do it. Yeah, all you guys are running around. I want to get there, too. Yeah. And so that's part of what we talk about. Uh, when, when people come to see the speech or hear the speech, I'll set three ladders up on the stage. You know, I'll have a small ladder, a medium-sized ladder, and then I have about a 12-foot ladder. And I give part of the speech from the top of this 12-foot ladder. <laughs> and, I, and each of these ladders represent different stages in our life. You know, the, the, the childhood, the, the, uh, you know, the college and, and, and student phase, and then there's the career phase. You know, all of us think that we ought to climb the top you know, to, uh, of the ladder. And so one of the things that we point out is as you climb the ladder of success, if you will, we think that we want to get to the top. But all of us fail to look at that little sign. Have you ever been to the top of a ladder, Shirley? I mean, when you get to the top of the ladder, there's this little sticker. You know, you go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's, you go anywhere, and there's a sticker on the side of the ladder, and we don't pay any attention to it. It says, warning, don't go here. So all of our life, what have we been trying to do? We've been trying to get to the top. And when we get to the top... We learn it's very different. We learn that it's lonely. It's isolated. We've made incredible sacrifices to get to where we are. Sometimes we've sacrificed family. We've all worked the late hours. We've worked the 8, the 10, the 12-hour days, the 6-day, the 7-day weeks. And we realize that all this hype that we've followed for all of our lives to get to the top, you know what? It's just pretty crazy at the top of the ladder. 
we we don't know who to trust. We don't know who wants something from us. We don't know if we really have true friends. And so we're isolated. And isolation for the leader is a very dangerous thing. I've heard it even referred to as frenemies. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody you think is a friend, but then you find out later they just wanted to use you to step over exactly. where they were trying to go to. So let me ask you a question. You, you kind of teed this up, Shirley. That was really good. When, whenever you think about a ladder, what's a ladder for? To get to the next place. The next place. Right? The climb. We're always climb. talking about climbing uh-huh. a ladder. Uh-huh. And so if I were to ask you, and I do this in the speech, I ask people, I say, what are the steps on a ladder typically called? Rungs. Rungs, right. And so one of the points in the speech is that all of us have rungs and wrongs in our ladder. Rungs, rungs, rungs and, and wrongs. And wrongs. We have rungs and wrongs in our leader ladder. And so as you think about it and you look back over your life, you begin thinking about people that have wronged you. I mean, we all have people that have wronged us. Mm -hmm. We may have family members. We may have parents. We may have siblings. We may have a a co-worker, somebody who's wronged us, stabbed us in the back, done something to us to prevent us from what? Climbing that leader ladder. Or or maybe even pulling you off. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But then there comes this point to where you realize I've been a wrong as well. You, that you've you've been you've wronged someone. Uh, you may have been pulling on someone's tailcoat. You may have stepped on someone, stepped over someone, and let's just face it, we all have stepped on somebody climbing up the leader ladder. Mm-hmm. And so the the key is to learn to be uh, a rung, not a wrong. Rungs are the people in our lives that have helped lift us up. Wrongs are the people that have helped hold us back or stepped on us. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that we ask as we're giving the speech is we say, who are the wrongs, who are the wrongs, and let's recognize both of them. First of all, let's talk about the wrongs. Who are the people that have wronged you? Are you living with bitterness? Are you lacking forgiveness in your life? And something I've learned recently in my life after a 35-year reconciliation with my father, a tough story we can go into sometime, 35 years, my father and I were estranged. And one of the things that I realized is that I can forgive but it takes two to reconcile. So this wrong in our life can really hinder us and affect our attitude. And we can live with this bitterness. So we all know what bitterness does. It's a poison. It poisons us. It doesn't poison the person we're bitter towards. It right. poisons us. Right. And so one of the things we deal with as we're talking about this is who are the people that have wronged you? And if you can't reconcile with them because sometimes they've passed away, they live somewhere we can't meet with them, one of the things that we can do is we, we can forgive them. So we learn to forgive the people that have wronged us. We're visiting with Ray Sanders, and Ray is CEO of Water4. The word water and the number four. And there's all kinds of fascinating things to Ray's life in addition to being a part of OK Ethics as our speaker Wednesday at the Jim Thorpe Sports Museum is that he loves loves to make a difference and we're going to learn more about that as well don't go anywhere we'll be right back after these messages what do three dog nights jeremiah was a bullfrog and elvis presley's heartbreak hotel have in common both have oklahoma ties jeremiah was written by duncan native hoyt axton and heartbreak hotel was co-written by his mother may born axton she was related to ou president david born although he started out his life on a football scholarship to osu son hoyt's career embraced music his songs were recorded by everyone from ringo star to oklahoma and john denver we salute the creativity of this talented okie Live up to the legacy of Oklahoma's leaders. Promote Oklahoma's values of integrity at work. Join Oklahoma Business Ethics Consortium on Wednesday, May 21st at the Jim Thorpe Museum. Hear Ray Sanders, CEO of Waterford Incorporated, and his presentation, Rungs and Wrong. Registration is required. Tickets are $35. Visit OKEthics.org or call 405-858-2233 from the Oklahoma Business Ethics Consortium and the Oklahoma Heritage Association. Hey, have you got some ugly old concrete? I mean, ugly old concrete. Why not replace it with color decorative concrete? Contact Carl Mears at 405-354-3338 or see his video at carlmears.com. Create peace of mind with a concrete storm shelter. 
with choices of above ground, below ground, or for a handicap accessible safe room. That's CarlMears.com or call Carl at 354-3338 and get rid of that old ugly concrete. Welcome back to the Where's Shirley program. Now here's your host, Shirley Mears. Ray, I understand there's a variety of things that you do Mm -hmm. and to your work at Waterfor, Mm -hmm. which has a way of bringing water to third world countries. Is that right? Yeah, the developing world. We bring water to the developing world. It's a very unique model. Uh, At Waterfor, we say that we're not into charity. We're into opportunity. Our, Our true mission and passion is to eradicate the world water crisis by putting the solution in the hands of the people. In essence, we're caring capitalists who want to put people to work solving their own problems. And so we've come up with a way. Uh, Dick Greenlee is the founder of Water 4. He's a geologist and has a water background. And Steve Stewart is an inventor. And they together have come up with a system and a solution that can be manufactured in country. It's very simple. Using materials from there. From the country, yeah. Using PVC pipe. One of the challenges was to find a material that is readily available anywhere in the world. And PVC pipe, believe it or not, Shirley, is available anywhere in the world. And so we've come up with a pump that will pump water from about 80 feet down in the ground. And we can help the folks learn how to manufacture the pumps, assemble the pumps. We've come up with a drilling method. In essence, we put them in business. So we raise capital to put people in business, to be in the water well business, to eradicate the the water problem themselves. All right here from Oklahoma. That's amazing. I mean, I understand digging a water well requires some huge pieces of equipment. Yeah, normally. So typically what would happen in the, in the developing world is uh, a, a big million dollar rig uh, would come out into an, an area and drill down you know, into the ground and they would put a well on and they'd leave and say, we'll see you guys later. And in about six months, believe it or not, about six months to 18 months, that water well has an O-ring in it and those O-rings blow out. And the beauty of the, the water floor access 1.2 uh, water or pump is that it's made out of PVC pipe. And this thing, we have pumps going on five years. But if it does break, the wonderful thing about it is the materials are readily available in the village. The guys that put in the pumps that are in business that are using the water floor system can go out to the well site, fix the well, and it's up and running again. And these are remote places. Very remote places. We have uh, we have two of our guys right now uh, up in the DRC uh, using water. Get this, Shirley, using water to free pygmy slaves. They're going into villages. Uh, it, it took them two days to get to the, where they needed to in the jungle. And these pygmies have been captured by other tribes, and they're they're enslaved. And one of the things that we're doing is we're going in and negotiating with these slave masters and saying, "Hey, what do you think about us bringing water in?" They like that idea. Mm-hmm. And if we can, and if we can bring water in, will you let these people go? Wow! Yeah, that's just a few of the stories. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Now, how will people learn more about Water Four? Well, Water Four obviously is like a lot of folks. We have a website, waterfour.org. You can go to waterfour.org and, and and learn a whole lot about what we do. If you go to the media section, you can see some of the videos that are there. You'll see the work that we're doing in Togo. Uh, I was telling you earlier, just just this morning. Just this morning, we, our container that we shipped out of Oklahoma City that's a factory in a box will employ about 60 well team drillers as well as about 200 uh, different people to work in, our, in our, our business there. That container landed at our site in Tomale, Ghana. It's the largest freshwater project in the world. We'll do about 7,000 wells in five years, and they are doing it. We're just providing and empowering the people. So it's not a handout. Oh heavens no! That's that is exactly. We, it's all about it's all about us coming together. We feel like we've been given a gift. We've been given an insight, and so for us to hoard that gift and that knowledge and not to share it with the world would be a tragedy. So really, all we're doing is is informing people about how they can they can uh, manufacture these pumps, training them in how to drill water wells, and they embrace it because they want water. And you don't charge for this. Well, what typically happens is that part of our job is that just like any kind of startup business, we're trying to raise capital to put these folks to work. Mm-hmm. And so they need tools and they need training. So we raise capital to help them get their initial tools, and then they end up paying it back. 
but they go to work and, and they can go out in the village and they can charge a certain amount of money to, to put a well on the, wa- the ground. Here's the good news. Typically, a water well costs about $10,000 to put in. Our guys, on average, and not always the case, but on average all across Africa, it costs about $1,000 for them to put in a well. About 20 to 25% of that goes to the well team, the, the owner of the business, the water for business, if you will. And so now he has a sustainable business. Mm-hmm. The other $750 goes towards material and paying his crew. And now you have fresh water in a village wow. serving people and a guy making a living solving the problem himself with a skill set that he didn't otherwise have. And we from the West, we don't have to be there to do it. We train them. We leave. And our goal, honestly, at Water 4, is to work ourselves out of a job. Amazing. Because so many children have been dying. Oh, sure. People dying. You know, 5,000 children. And this is, this is you know, factual. 5,000 children a day die because they can't get access to fresh water. Now, let me put that in perspective to you. If you and I were to step outside here today and we saw a school bus go down the road, there's 50 kids in it. Well, that's 100 school buses a day driving off over a cliff because they can't get access to fresh water. Wow. Yeah. And you guys are bringing them the ability to drill water in their own backyard. Yeah, and giving them giving them a livelihood, giving them a purpose. Uh, you know, I got connected with Water 4. I founded an organization called Giant Experiences. And one of the things that we do is that we try to bring leaders, uh, professionals, folks with a passion into the developing world to let them see what's going on firsthand. And one of the things we found out about Okies in particular, there's a certain grit about Okies. If I were to describe to you a, a, a brick red soddy structure with a grass thatch roof and chickens out front and cows in the background and a woman out feeding the chickens and a, and a gutter on the side of the, uh, of, the, of the structure with the water running into a rain barrel. When I ask people where that's at, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's got to be in Africa or Latin America. And I say, would you believe that that was Oklahoma 100 years ago? And that, that image, that, that painting is on the house uh, floor just outside the house chamber at the Oklahoma State Capitol. It's a big, huge mural on the wall of an Oklahoma Sooner, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> Uh, out, out feeding chickens in a similar situation. One of, wow. one of the first things that they did was to drill water. And so Oklahomans get this. Wow. That is so exciting. We're visiting with Ray Sanders. He is CEO of Water4. You can learn more about that organization at water4.org. Ray is going to be our speaker for OK Ethics on Wednesday, May 21st, and then he will be in Tulsa on the 22nd. If you'd like to know more about OK Ethics, just go to the website, okethics.org. Registration is required, and it's very easy. Tickets are $35, and there are discounts available for members. Get to know Ray Sanders at Water 4 and come hear him at OK Ethics. I know that in addition to your speaking ability, you have a big interest in sharing great stories. Mm -hmm. You have a history, don't you, of being on radio? Well, yeah. You know, one of the things that I love, my my degree was in broadcasting in the broadcast business, and uh, the ability to tell stories the theater of the mind is an awesome is an awesome thing, and one of the things that um, one of the stories I like to share are about the different folks that uh, have gone with us into the developing world and got a passion for what we're doing. Uh, one of the guys that's involved with uh, OK Ethics is a guy by the name of Ross Hill, and he's a he's a uh, the founding CEO of Bank Two, and here's a guy that when I first met him um, didn't even have a passport. And he found out about what we were doing, trying to make a difference in the world, got his passport, has got involved. And like a lot of us, we wonder, what can we do with our lives? We go to work every day. Sometimes it becomes mundane. And we think, does my life really matter? And I'm convinced that when people begin realizing that they do have a purpose, that all work was created for good, that we can begin recognizing our purpose. And as we climb that leader ladder, we can figure out just what that purpose is. And so here's a guy like like Ross Hill that has now since going on a giant experience, getting involved with Water 4, has written a book called Broken Pieces. He has his entire organization rallied around raising funds and, and sending. He sends his employees into the developing world to drill water wells, and he himself has traveled and spoke all around the world. And so it's fun telling those kind of stories whenever people can begin realizing, you know what, I may be a banker, I may work in broadcasting, I may be a janitor, I may be a stay-at-home mom. But I can make a difference. And what we're finding is that all of us have the power of personal influence. Every one of us 
has a story that can make a difference. And so that's what we're trying to do is help people realize how they can make a difference. And when you have climbed the ladder, if you find when you get to the top it was leaning against the wrong wall, Mm -hmm. your relationships are falling apart, your life's falling apart, you've got all the success, all the toys, all the trappings that the world says Mm -hmm. should make you happy, Mm -hmm. and yet it almost generates unhappiness, Mm -hmm. finding a way of taking your work, which has uh, extrinsic values and turning it into a work that gives you intrinsic mm-hmm. values can give you this huge sense of peace. Well, it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, I, we always say, you know, we have a big vision. We're trying to eradicate the world water crisis. Come on, how much bigger of a, a vision could that be? But one of the things we as the executive team and among our, our team at Waterport, we say, find the one today. Who's the one today that you can inspire? Who's the one today that you can influence? So if today you have an awakening at the top of the ladder or at the bottom of the ladder, because one of the things we've learned along the way is that the greatest leaders that ever lived, they weren't about climbing a ladder. They were about climbing down the ladder and helping other people climb up it. You know, Jesus was a great great teacher. Gandhi was a great teacher. But if you look at all the great leaders that ever lived, they came to serve, mm-hmm. not, to be served. not to be served. And so no matter where you find yourself on the ladder, whether it's up against the wrong wall or you're heading up or you're heading down, what you can do is you can say, today, today is my opportunity to find the one to make a difference. And that's what it means to climb the leader ladder. It's so good to have you with us today, Ray. Well, it's fun being here. This is a fun place, and it's <laughs> always fun being with you. And I would, I would hope people would come out. I think they're going to be a, a, among a group of great leaders at the OK Ethics Group, and it'll be a fun day. It's a great place at the Jim Thorpe Museum, and uh, I hope they'll come out and visit with us. Well, this is the 10th year for the Oklahoma Business Ethics Consortium, and they have guiding principles that are so intriguing, and I'm now having different members of OK Ethics come here to the studio and record mm-hmm. about the different guiding principles. But you know what amazes me? Shannon Warren started this 10 years ago, and we have organizations like Hobby Lobby and Bama Companies and Chesapeake and Kim Ray and Devon and Sandridge as sponsors mm-hmm. yeah. of this organization. I can't think of a better person to have come up with the idea of a, an organization like this than Shannon. And if you begin uh, looking at the who's who among this group of people, you'll realize it's some heavy hitters, but everybody can make a difference, whether they're those large organizations mm-hmm. or whatever. One of the things that I'll share uh, during this speech are different stories, uh, one in which is about uh, a group of founding stock traders on the Shanghai Stock Exchange and how they had to make a, different, a, a decision ethically as to how they would function on the stock exchange. And so these organizations, we've all you know heard about the organizations, the corporations that have had big ethical issues in the, in the last few years. Well, these organizations have said, you know what, we're going to hold ourselves to this standard. And so I think it's a good group of folks and it's a good group to be um, associated with, and they'll challenge you. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have some pretty strong code of conduct uh, that they, they, they ask you to abide by. And if everybody was involved with OK Ethics and abided by that, Man, I'm talking, it would be a a wonderful place. Well, we are so shaped by who we spend time with. Mm -hmm. And if you're just watching corporations and you're thinking it's all about the dollar and it doesn't matter about the people, Mm -hmm. you'll make decisions that fit into that line. But by coming to OK Ethics, hearing our speakers, phenomenal speakers now, you begin to see the world a little bit differently. Yeah. So you're going to be our speaker May 21st, Wednesday, at the Jim Thorpe Sports Museum. And then you'll be in Tulsa on the 22nd. Mm-hmm. Our listeners can learn more by going to okethics.org and get to know how to have an influence, how to make a difference by hearing Ray Sanders, CEO of Waterfor, and his presentation on rungs and wrongs. Join us again next time here on the Where Shirley Show. Mm-hmm.